Possibly if Alex just goes something like Palkia Regielecki and uses Electroweb for speed control to get that Palkia the advantages it needs, uh, Paul is going to be in a really tough position. So Alex actually having multiple avenues to victory in this way, either setting up Trick Room and using your slow Pokemon to accomplish it that way, or having Regielecki Electroweb the other side of the field and actually slowing down of Paul's team. So let's get into a game one of top eight between Paul Verlees and Alex Underhill. Paul on the top of your screen with the Zashi Whimsicott lead. And there is Palkia next to Gothitelle. I hope Paul likes having these two Pokemon on the field because he can't switch them out now. He can't, and that's really unfortunate for Zacian. I, I, like I said, you know, it's a kind of a tough matchup for Zacian into the Palkia like this, and now has Paul no Paul has no choice other than to make it work. Now, with the Whimsicott on the field next to the Zacian, you know, Whimsicott can provide some support here. A helping hand would certainly boost the amount of damage that Zacian could do into the Palkia. Alternatively, if Whimsicott's running something like Taunt, you know, Taunt into the Gothitelle will probably deny a Trick Room, which is exactly why we're seeing that fake out into the Whimsicott to start this game off. Yep, the Whimsicott will not be able to go for an attack this turn because of the fake out. Substitute from Zashin is going to take 25% of its HP and put that little adorable substitute in front of it. But the Trick Room from Palkia, so a very, uh, very telegraph turn from Alex on turn one with just the fake out Trick Room. It's very uh, normal play Trick Room teams go for often. It is, but the fact that Zashin was able to get Substitute out does mean that Paul can match the slow play of this uh, trick room a little bit. You know, it's not going to be comfortable and certainly Whimsicott is in a position where there's only so much it can do at this point. Uh, it was stuck on the field, not anymore. Um, I'm very curious to see if Paul went for a protect on that Zacian or possibly tried to go for a helping handed boosted attack this turn, uh, knowing that you have the substitute up to protect it. Whimsicott with the taunt, but because Incinero switched in, that will not work on it there. The Earth Power into Zacian will be able to break the substitute there. But now that Alex has switched Gothitelle off of the field, they are no longer Shadow Tag locked on Paul's side. Behemoth Blade, though, targeting into the Incineroar switch in. So a great play from Alex. Not only did the taunt not work, but now the Incineroar intimidated Zacian. And because of the eject button, you actually don't even get to switch out at this point because Gothitelle can come right back in as if nothing even happened. That is a great piece of information for Paul to know that the eject button is in place. I think that Incineroar had a pretty good turn. It's unfortunate that the substitute blocked the Intimidate, as I think Alex was hoping to, you know, maybe get that to stick a little bit more. Uh, but trying to get that Intimidate down on the field and then allowing the Gothitelle to switch back in without having taken any damage and without having been taunted in that previous turn uh, is certainly a benefit for Alex. It's unfortunate that we're still sort of in the same place that we were in the previous turn. Whimsicott could go for another taunt into that Gothitelle if uh, Paul thinks that the Gothitelle will stay on the field this time around. Uh, Zacian, though, will uh, take damage from an attack this turn, barring something like a Protect. And I think if you're in Paul's shoes, you know, you look at the number of Trick Room turns remaining on the field and you look at your Zacian and just how crucial it is to this matchup, I think you have to go for that Protect this turn and maybe hope that you can find the opportunity to switch out and protect it so that it can come back once Trick Room. And now Dynamo Max is over. Paul needs a way to bide his time while Trick Room is up. When the Twisted Dimensions return to normal, that's when he can try to win this game. Protect, as you were saying, from Zashin is the safest spot for Paul on this turn, as the potential fake out was looming there. So the fake out goes into Whimsicott, not like it was going to be doing much anyway this turn anyway. Uh, so the Max Quake into a protected Zashin, not doing a lot, only 25% of the intended damage into that slot. Uh, so all in all, a, a pretty strong turn for Paul here on Alex's first turn of Dynamax. That's already one turn down, and then we, you just got two more Trick Room turns to get through. Yeah, two more Trick Room turns and two more Dynamax turns, which is, I think, fortunate for Paul, but it's going to be uh, such a struggle to get there. Uh, this Gothitelle could go for, um, you know, many different moves that it has access to support-wise. I mean, we don't really know much about it other than the fake out at Trick Room at this point. Uh, we could also just see another switch if from Alex into that Incineroar once again to intimidate that Zacian. I think Alex is in a perfect position here to set the pace of this match and, you know, try and find the most optimal way to use the remainder of Palkia's Dynamax turns. And uh, what better way than lending some boosts to your good old friend Calyrex Ice Rider, who's going to be be doing a ton of damage with uh, those glacial lances under Trick Room. Yep, the 
Shadow Tag oh. is off the field right now, but Paul actually going for the double protect, successfully getting it this time. That's only a 30% chance of happening, so definitely not very likely. And the taunt from Winsicott goes towards the Cower X slot there. So now on the second turn, the Dynamax Max Quake into a protected Zacian again. That's really huge because if that double protect failed, Zacian was gone. And Zacian wouldn't be able to switch out this turn, which I think is the most important thing for Paul, recognizing that the 30% chance your Zacian is able to hold on is much better than a damage roll, possibly, to see if your Zacian will survive. I don't think the Zacian would have survived that Max Quake either, but, you know, only these trainers know at this point how these Pokemon have been trained. Zacian free to switch out at this point. Paul could send in something like an Incineroar or possibly the Kyogre in order to just take damage this turn and get through the remainder of Trick Room. I think Alex, if he's looking to set up Trick Room once more, you just switch the Calyrex out at this point, get that Gothitelle back in so that you can go for a Trick Room again in the next turn. Uh, but still, just a really strong position from Alex. I love how he's using this Gothitelle to keep the pressure consistently on Paul. Whimsicott taunting the Palkia as this is the last turn of Trick Room, so you won't be able uh, to potentially reset up Trick Room while you are taunted. Glacial Lance connecting onto oh. both of Paul's Pokemon. Zashin just barely hanging on. Whimsicott getting knocked out as it's a super effective attack into that slot. So that is one Chilling May boost for Calyrex here. When you get that first one, you can start steamrolling. It's also going to get another special defense boost thanks to this Palkia. And now Zashin's finally down. Paul all five turns of Trick Room just had those two Pokemon on the field because he was either unable to switch or really unable to stop Alex's game plan. I mean, it's great for Paul that Trick Room has ended. He gets his last two Pokemon in without any damage and still has access to Dynamax, what I can only assume is going to be that Kyogre or possibly the Rillaboom at this point in time. But uh, it seems like a very large cost to pay. You know, had the opportunity to keep that Zacian safe for later. Uh, could just be recognizing that, you know, because I don't have play rough, the best thing Zacian can do is stall for time. You know, it got the substitute, it got that double protect. And uh, that was enough to open up the field for Kyogre and Rillaboom as Paul's last two Pokemon to come in. Uh, that being said, you know, Alex does still have all four of his Pokemon around, uh, relatively healthy, all things considered. And quite frankly, you don't even really need the Gothitelle Shadow Tag ability anymore. So uh, if you want to prevent this Palkia or this Calyrex Ice from taking damage this turn, you can just switch in that Gothitelle, have it take that damage for it, and then come back in, you know, you lose the Intimidate on the Calyrex. But I guess it's neutral right now anyway, so that's not as important, but still, you have the option to sort of pivot and find opportunities for chip damage, which I think is a really important thing for Alex and how he's played this game. It is also nice having the three special defense boosts on Palkia from oh, those that three too. Yeah, max yeah. quakes, because you essentially can ignore Kyogre as Palkia. One, you're already Water Dragon, which is uh, one of the main draws to using Palkia in restricted formats is its typing matchup against the Kyogres. And the plus three special defense there, you're just making it uh, that much more problematic for Paul to deal with. But at this point, Paul has not used his Dynamax yet from one of those first two Pokemon. So he has decided to opt for the G-Max Rillaboom instead of Kyogre as it can hit the Palkia neutrally with grass attacks, but also into its defense stat instead of that crazy boosted special defense. We're gonna have the Water Spout at full HP connecting onto both of Alex's Pokemon. Look how little that did to Palkia. That's not Dynamax Palkia, that's regular Palkia. That did, <laughs> did, you know, just barely double digit damage to it. And now the Spatial Rend from Palkia into Kyogre, bringing it down with that's a, a critical, critical hit. hit to around 25% of its HP. And now it's time to get drumming, Gabby. Yeah, that G-Max drum solo will be enough to pick up the knockout on the Calyrex, but, you know, I think you made a very good call out earlier when you mentioned the three special defense boosts on the Palkia. I feel like that really did force Paul to go for the Gigantamax on that Rillaboom. I think the nice thing about Gigantamax Rillaboom is that you're always going to do a very high amount of damage with your G-Max drum solos because that's just, uh, it, it's the benefit of the move. You always have a solid base uh, base damage regardless of what you're basing the move off of but uh, still that uh, Rillaboom is going to struggle to uh, stick around especially with the Incineroar making an appearance on the field could go for fake out plus another spatial rend into that Kyogre for the knockout there and uh, rain is also gonna wrap up soon too so Alex still in a 
pretty strong position. Paul has some options to play out, but he's going to need a lot of damage down on this Palkia very quickly in order to try and find this win con. I just love that Rillaboom is just drumming away in, <laughs> in, in between turns. It's like provi providing his own entertainment while he's waiting for Alex to choose his moves because we know what Paul's plan is. You're just going to drum solo as much as you can uh, under the, these last two G-Max turns, but he's just, you know, drumming away. Keep marching to the uh, beat of his own drum, if you will. <laughs> Yeah, and Alex uh, switching out that Incineroar to get a second Intimidate down onto that Rillaboom, which uh, is going to make a huge difference when that comes into play. Spatial Rend goes into the Protect out of Kyogre, so no damage into that slot on this turn. And Max Quake this time around. It was the Incineroar uh, on the field, but instead it's actually going to be into the Palkia slot. I thought maybe uh, the Incineroar would have been a, a big spot because you know it's not Shikaberry. We already saw it use the Eject button, so that would have been super effective damage. But instead, just doing a little bit to the Palkia and also giving Paul's two Pokemon the special defense boost. That's really going to help this Rillaboom stick around. Uh, you know, I think that it's important for Paul to get that bulk up while he has the opportunity to. But, you know, that Kyogre, I think the big question is with that special defense boost and with the recovery from the grassy terrain as well, uh, will it be able to survive a spatial rend this turn? Uh, Gothitelle can go for fake out into that slot. So I think if you're worried about that, Paul just goes for a second double protect in this game to try and keep that Kyogre around as long as it can. And then use the Rillaboom to try and target down Pal try to target down Palkia. You know, that uh, the Incineroar is certainly something you have to worry about in the back as well. Knowing that you have access to high horsepower most likely makes that a little bit less scary. Uh, and I think Alex doing a very good job of keeping that Palkia safe as that Palkia is his win condition at this point in time. Palkia foregoing those special defense boosts by switching out into Incineroar. Alex valuing that second Intimidate from the Incineroar more important than the Palkia staff buffs. Fake out goes into Kyogre on this slot or on this turn, so there will be no damage from the Kyogre. And the G-Max jumps low into the resisted Incineroar. So a great switch from Alex there because not only is he doing less damage because of Intimidate, but also because of Incineroar being a fire type. And uh, you don't really need the special defense boosts anymore on your Palkia, knowing that the Kyogre is so close to being knocked out. All you have to do is connect an attack. Uh, if Gothitelle has anything to do some chip damage at this point in time, that essentially guarantees that spatial run will knock out regardless of that special defense boost. So, uh, you know, this Palkia is so important for Alex in this matchup because Paul struggles to uh, deal damage to it. As a result, keeping it safe gives you the best opportunity to move forward. Kyogre and Rillaboom protecting this turn. So Paul, Paul has picked, uh, selected protect a lot in this matchup. Double protect on the uh, on the Zacian earlier, and now two protects on the Kyogre. It does let Gothitelle freely set up Trick Room. So now that the uh, Twisted Dimensions are here, those slower Pokemon like Gothitelle, like Incineroar, like Palkia, they'll be moving before a traditionally faster Pokemon like Rillaboom or even Kyogre sometimes. Yeah, and that's exactly what Alex needed to lock in this win, knowing that he can go for a late game Trick Room. Gothitelle hasn't taken any damage. This entire game, Paul has just ignored the Gothitelle and I think that's really come back to haunt him at this point in time. Uh, you do have the opportunity to try and go for damage now, but if Palkia comes out onto the field and gets an attack in, uh, that's going to be game. Parting shot into the Kyogre, dropping its attack and special attack there. So those attacks from Kyogre are going to be doing even less damage. And now Incineroar gets yet another switch out so it can intimidate Rillaboom for a third time. If Paul is not able to get critical hits with this Rillaboom, it's really going to struggle doing damage. Hypnosis Aww. from the <laughs> Gothitelle for the fun of it does Aww. not connect. But then Origin Pulse also misses on the, on the Gothitelle there. So two misses from both of our trainers on this turn and that origin pulse did effectively nothing to the Palkia and that was in the rain. That was in the rain and that was thanks to the parting shots from that Incineroar. So again, Palkia did not need those three special defense boosts anymore and this is Palkia's game to win. Uh, you know, they say Palkia is the god of space, I believe, but it feels like it's more like the god of twisted dimensions in this yeah, matchup. Yeah, especially in uh, restricted formats. Yeah, and Gothitelle knowing that it has hypnosis is great information for Paul going into game two. And I, I think that this sort of solidifies what I was talking about earlier that going into game two you cannot ignore the gothitelle because if you ignore the gothitelle it'll switch in and out shadow tag will prevent you from switching your own pokemon around it'll get trick room up both early game and
in late game. And now on top of that, it can throw in some hypnosises for fun. You know, it's not the most accurate move, but if it were to connect, it would just change the game dramatically. Grassy Glide into the Palkia, not doing a lot of damage because of those Intimidates. Spatial Ren goes into Kyogre's Protect. Hypnosis does connect on to the Rail Boom there, so that's really unfortunate for Paul. But as we've been mentioning, these last, last couple of turns have been somewhat of a formality or at this point because of how strong of a position that Alex is in because of his Palkia's positioning here. So now that Rail Boom has to be asleep, this next turn and Kyogre really can't damage uh, the Palkia whatsoever. Eventually, this Palkia will clean up the match. It's unfortunate that the Rillaboom was put to sleep at this point in the game, but I, I totally agree. I, I think that this is the time when you let the game play out. You know, this damage calc in particular at plus one special defense, how much does Spatial Ren do? Uh, but you start thinking about your game two game plan. And, you know, another Hypnosis connecting with that Kyogre, again, just sealing the deal here for Alex to win game one. One thing I do want to talk about, though, while we're waiting for this game to wrap up is it's interesting to me that the Gothitelle is actually faster than the Palkia because it's moving second in Trick Room. Uh, I think this is a good indication of maybe how these Pokemon are trained and something else for Paul to keep an eye out for. Hypothetically, you know, if he has a Pokemon that is... Uh, I guess slower than Palkia on his team, that means it would also be slower than the Gothitelle. And it's possible that the Incineroar, you know, maybe that makes that matchup more viable for him. He can just easily remove it from the field. Uh, bringing Incineroar into a Palkia matchup is not typically something you do in a game one situation, just because Palkia can get access to Hydro Pump and it's part water, like you were saying, and that's not going to be a fun time. But uh, going into game two, just seeing how detrimental that Gothitelle was and how it really shut down Paul's strategy, I think that's an ad adaptation you have to consider. And Palkia with the Space Ren into Kyogre with the critical hit. All right. Uh, well, looked like it would have got it anyway uh, because of the previous <laughs> turn's damage there, but always nice to get a crit. We'll knock it out, and now once Rillaboom wakes up, he's going to realize the situation and know that the Rillaboom cannot 3v1 this. And Alex just playing this endgame so well, continuing to cycle the Incineroar in and out so that the Rillaboom, you know, the attack is just even lower. And uh, hypothetically, if Rillaboom were to wake up, the fake out would shut that down, and that's exactly what we saw. And now there's Trick Room out on the field again. Uh, Alex just playing this endgame incredibly well, not leaving any openings for Paul to try and find a sneaky win condition. Yeah, because you could have got lazy on that turn, right? Oh, yeah. You, you could have just went for the fake out spatial run, saying, oh, we got this wrapped up. But because Alex is such a great trainer and he knows all of his win conditions, it's better to, yes, do you win that 99% of the time? Yes, but it's better to make sure it's 100% win con and you guarantee this first win in game one of top eight. And we see a lot of these, you know, more accomplished players take this kind of strategy where you play things out till the end. I mean, we just saw the three minute timer pop up there on screen. Uh, even if you know you can't win, because if your opponent lets something slip, or maybe uh, if you get like an additional piece of information, how much damage will this do in this situation? That helps you craft your game plan. And I think the fact that Alex was able to sort of match the stamina of Paul in this game one, and you know, continue to play for that slow win con and just lock everything in really tightly, uh, just goes to show that you know he's ready to sort of contend with the best of the best. Uh, going into game two, I'd love to see a very similar strategy from Alex. I, I don't think you necessarily make any adaptations. Even if you are expecting your opponent to bring in that Incineroar, I think that's more of a playstyle adaptation than a Pokemon adaptation. Uh, whereas Paul really needs to rethink his game strategy. You know, I think it was great that the Zacian and the Kyogre got him through the first round of Trick Room, but he just didn't have any momentum left. And the second and third Trick Room really sealed the deal. Yeah, I'm somewhat wondering Paul's decisions here and what he has to value. You have to value, obviously, your four best Pokemon for this specific matchup, but you also have to, more importantly, value your best lead against Gothitelle Palkia because yeah. you can't switch out. There are no Ghost types on the other end. There's no Shadow Tag on the other end. You are in a spot where your lead is going to have to stay in. And if Whimsicott is just going to get fake outed and try to taunt into Incineroar and issues like that, it might not be the most effective option of a lead against the Trick Room team. I think Whimsicott, on paper, it's so good against Trick Room, right? Knowing that the, the Gothitelle has all these status moves, you know, having access to that taunt to shut it down. I mean, even if there was a Mental Herb in play, which we don't, I don't think we saw anything no, about that Gothitelle. No item, yeah. Exactly. Uh, you know that just two turns of taunt would be enough to honestly seemingly shut it down. Um, but what we don't, what we don't know necessarily is, um, you know, 
if their Whimsicott could have been played differently in that situation. Like, I, I think that the, uh, the taunts that it threw out were important and certainly could stop this Gothitelle, but Alex was able to switch around so easily. I mean, we had the eject button reveal as well uh, on that Incineroar, which just makes it so much more easier for him to shake off that taunt that I agree, I, you leave Whimsicott behind. It's a great Pokemon on paper, but knowing what we know now about this matchup, it just can't necessarily match the utility of the Gothitelle. I also am pretty confident that that was the first non shukaberry Incineroar we've seen all weekend, I right? I think so, yeah. So I love that adaptation <laughs> on Alex and on his team here, not just going with what the standard uh, item of choice is for Incineroar, understanding that I need to build my team to my specific win conditions. And what helps me is switching out, intimidating the other side, and then being able to switch right back into Gothitelle so they don't get to swap out. Well, it looks like we're getting the same lead from Paul. So that Whimsicott and that Zacian, you have to wonder how they're going to mix things up. Especially, there it is, Gothitel Palkia. Yeah, so at this point, Paul is unable to switch out either of his two leads because yep. of Gothitel Shadow Tag. So same leads as game one, but obviously something has to change here in game two. So thinking back to game one, we saw the Whimsicott get flinched by Fake Out on Gothitelle, and we saw that Zacian go for Substitute while Palkia set up Trick Room. I think Fake Out Trick Room is a fantastic play from Alex still, but if you're Paul, you know, yes, the Substitute helps you, you know, withstand a couple more turns of Trick Room, but maybe you just try and get the early damage onto that Gothitelle. Substitute yet again from Paul on turn one here. Uh, so it looks like this game is going, or this turn, I should say, is going to be turning out the exact same way as it did in game one. Now is the time for the adjustment for Paul. Yeah. He, before, he was like, all right, I can't stop fake out Trick Room. This is now my plan. And you have to wonder, a Substitute will protect that Zacian from the Incineroar switch in. If Alex decides to go for that again, uh, maybe you just go for that Sacred Sword one more time, or maybe you just focus in on the Palkia, knowing that on the long game, that's going to be the problematic Pokemon for you. But instead, it looks like the Palkia stays in, the Gothitelle stays in, and now Zacian has to worry about Hypnosis. That's a blind oh. Hypnosis, 60% oh, accurate, no. and it does connect onto that poor little Whimsicott. So Whimsicott is going to be asleep this turn and potentially for two more turns. That's two more turns that it might not be able to have taunt. Sacred Sword is the best option into the Palkia since the Behemoth Blade would be resisted into that slot. So as you see, uh, depending on the, the damage rolls there, that looks like a three hit KO for the Sacred Sword. And that's possible the Whimsicott was going for an attack because we did not see it move prior to the Palkia or the Gothitelle. That would have been the extra little chip damage needed to secure the knockout from a second Sacred Sword. And Alex now keeping that Palkia safe, which is going to be so important. If you can find a late game Dynamax, that's going to be huge. I was going to say, Calyrex switches in and it's an Ice type. It would have been weak to the Sacred Sword if you went for that. But Paul playing a little more defensively, knowing that that Hypnosis was going straight into the Zacian's directing so the right call so that he doesn't get put to sleep. You have to give Zacian the opportunity to not be put to sleep by the hypnosis and your best shot of that other than it just missing is that Whimsicott waking up this turn and going for a taunt and I think that's exactly why we're seeing this Incineroar switch in like we saw in game one to take that taunt make sure that Gothitelle remains a threat for Paul long term in this game. Yep so that Intimidate there is no sub helping it out here in this slot, so he will lose that. Whimsicott does wake up, but because the Incineroar switched in, he's just going to stop the taunt yet again, and now Glacial lands into both of these slots. This Whimsicott is going to get knocked out from it, and Zacian brought down to half of its HP. So it's up to the Zacian at this point. If it, Paul decided to target the Incineroar slot, Incineroar will just eject button out and he can bring Gothitelle back in. But instead he goes for the substitute again instead of a Sacred Sword out to the Calyrex to potentially do a lot of damage to it. I think that Paul is just playing to stall out Trick Room. You want to alternate your substitutes and your protects to make sure that you have the best possible uh, opportunity to withstand all these turns. And now Zacian could certainly go for a protect behind the substitute uh, to stall out the last remaining turn of Trick Room. But the unfortunate thing is while you're stalling through all these turns, Calyrex more than free to go for Glacial Lance and do some good damage onto both these Pokemon. That Incineroar as well could go for a parting shot this turn into that Kyogre drop its special attack. That made such a huge difference in game one, especially once that Palkia made an appearance again. Then you get the Gothitelle in for free. 
and then the Gothitelle's ready to fake out so you can trick him again next turn. And now Zacian even has the availability to switch and doesn't want to because you just set up substitute. Exactly. So you really just, uh, you know, Gothitelle from the back is still pressuring you from not switching out. Exactly, and that's what's so scary about Gothitelle. You know, it's a very difficult Pokemon to run occasionally because, I mean, if you're like me, you see it on the field, you panic, and you just start doubling into that slot no matter what. Uh, but if you're able to keep it safe, if you're able to switch it in at key points in time, thanks to items like Eject Button or moves like Parting Shot with the combination of Trick Room, uh, then you just apply such incredible pressure onto your opponent. It's almost impossible for them to respond because they have to sack one of their own Pokemon in order to get that opportunity to. Now it's time for Alex to Dynamax here in game two, choosing the Calyrex Ice Rider in this matchup, a really strong Pokemon already has one attack buff thanks to the uh, Chilling Name, or thanks to the Chilling Name ability that activated from knocking out Whimsicott on the previous turn. Paul is always going, is also going to respond with a Dynamax of his own, this time around with the Kyogre. So Kyogre, while the rain is up, you can try to take advantage of these two Pokemon on the field. They're not resisting water attacks, so you can have those brain boosted Max Geysers to do some solid damage. Zashin will be able to protect on this turn so importantly keeping its substitute intact on let's say if the the Calyrex decides to attack into it and that is the same scenario we saw in game one max quake into a protected substituted zashian this is only doing a quarter of the damage it's supposed to do does it get rid of the substitute and it, it does. does so that's actually oh. really tough because if paul could have kept the sub for one more turn that would have been crucial it's unfortunate, but that is how it goes. Will not take damage from the Flare Blitz at least, so you got that going for you. But again, Alex in a fantastic position for this Calyrex to really control the pace of the game at this point in time. And Geyser is enough to knock out that Incineroar as well, which means Gothitelle can just come right back out on the field. And as the Twisted Dimensions return to normal, Gothitelle, it's time to come back out and switch it right back to the position that Alex wants to be in, which is under Trick Room. You have two more turns of Dynamax left for both of these trainers, though, so this is really the moment where you can do a lot of, you know, have a lot of offensive pressure to output towards the other end. It's unfortunate that the Calyrex is Dynamax in the sense that Alex will have to rely on the Gothitelle for a Trick Room if he decides to go that route, but given that Calyrex is at full health, could score a knockout on the Zosh in this turn for that attack boost, you know, I think He's in a fine position to just try and go for Trick Room on the Gothitelle anyways. If you want to play it super safe, you know, use your turn of Fake Out to flinch that Zacian, go for that KO, and then go for Trick Room next turn. Uh, but still, you know, it's only a matter of time at this point. Max Geyser from Kyogre will be going towards the Calyrex slot here. So in the rain, that does some solid damage to it. But if Calyrex is going to go for another Max Quake, like we see right here, that'll be a second special defense boost and does take out Zashin. So Paul is down to his final two Pokemon being the Kyogre and then the fourth Pokemon we'll see in the back. It was Rillaboom last time around. Uh, so we'll see if that is the option. So remember Palkia, who's the one who set up Trick Room on turn one, has just been chilling in the back, waiting for its moment. It might not even get that if Calyrex just sweeps the field. And that's the scary thing about Calyrex, is that you cannot let it do this thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's it's so, there's so much that Paul has to juggle in this matchup. You know, you have to worry about the Palkia, you have to worry about the Gothitelle with these Hypnosis, this Fake Out, this Trick Room, and you have to worry about the Calyrex with the Chilling Nay ability as well. You know, I think that we've seen a lot of these teams in this tournament turn to Calyrex as this utility Pokemon that does some support things that you need for your team. In this case, it helps you get Trick Room up, but then it just uses its abilities, and it's a fantastic access to a spread move to deal big damage, get those attack boosts, and just become your win condition. And knowing that Gothitelle has Helping Hand as well is just perfect for this Calyrex. Vrilboom will protect, and remember, Vrilboom is not Gigantamax like he was in game one, so he's going to take a lot more damage from a potential attack from the Calyrex. Here is the third attack, though, and Kyogre is doing less and less damage because of those Max Quake boosts. Now it's time for the Max Hailstorm to come out into that Rillaboom slot. It did protect, so it's it still doesn't enough. even matter. That's 25% that's of the damage it was supposed to take. That means it did, like, 200% damage to the Rillaboom there. And Paul just still leaving that Gothitelle on the field. 
even if there was a way out for him at this point in time, all that Calyrex has to use is its last turn of Dynamax to go for a Max Guard, uh, maybe try and set up a Trick Room, and that is going to be a G. Gee, maybe you target the Max Geyser finally into that Gothitelle, but if it has any bulk investment to take the Max Geyser out of rain, it's not even a Max Geyser anymore, as it looks like that Kyogre, uh, you know, is returning back to its normal size. Uh, just fantastically well played by Alex. You know, has this incredible win condition set up for him on the field. And then on top of all this, still has that Palkia in the back as well to just come in and just guarantee he wins. Calyrex with a protect on this turn, so he doesn't want to get hit down by the Kyogre, but a Kyogre with Water Spout not going to be doing too much as, as the longer the game goes on, because we'll be losing more and more health. And there's a Gothitelle at 1 HP. A critical hit. A critical hit. So unless that was a miraculous survive, we finally get the reveal of Gothitelle holding a Focus Sash. We've seen all four of its moves now. We know its item is Focus Sash as well. And with the Trick Room going back up, Gothitelle actually taking one for the team, getting knocked out from the hail there. So now the Palkia can switch in for free. But an interesting interaction to note that we saw play out especially now that we know it is Focus Sash on that Gothitelle. In the turn prior, in between turns, we saw the Max Hailstorm take out a little bit of health on that Gothitelle, and then we saw the Grassy Terrain heal it back up. The way that Focus Sash works is that it activates as long as you are at full health when you are taking that damage. So Alex recognizing that he doesn't necessarily care about setting up hail because there is that grassy terrain to support that Gothitelle to keep that item in play and ensure that he got the trick room up so that he can move on to top four here in Indianapolis. That was a great display of VGC from Alex Underhill showing that this trick room team was prepared for the field. There, how many teams do you think he faced that were Kyogre Zashi? It's one of the most popular <laughs>